My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Vault of the Void. Oh, I'm ready to get back into it. It's time to go for the Sacrifice deck with the Daughter of the Void. Born into Darkness, the Void's only corruption, uh, corruption rather, only makes her stronger. Uh, we start with nine copies of Grasp. Inflict seven damage. Soul Tithe one. Now, Soul Tithe one says, uh, gain a point of corruption for each Soul Tithe gained. At the start of your turn, suffer threat equal to your Soul Tithe. Soul Tithe, uh, threat, again, is just damage, but it's only damage if you do not account for it and block it. Uh, threshold is if your soul type is at or above this value, it'll trigger the extra effect there, which is threshold six, trigger plus one times. And soul type gives you value in terms of corruption. I've also got the empowering darkness over here, block six, opener, lose two soul type and block two for each removed. Upgrades to just block nine. Opportunity, inflict 50% corruption damage, soul type two. Uh, then threshold six, inflict 50% corruption damage. Upgrades to become Threshold 4. It's Threshold 4 and uh, 12 damage on the Grasp as well for its upgrade. And then Spirit Shield, finally. Lock equal to your Corruption. Expel and upgrades to be Purged to block 5. I under uh, underutilize upgrading this early and I'm probably going to have to utilize that here. We also start with the Spell Sacrifice. Gain 50% Rage and Threshold 7. Reduce your Soul Tithe by 2. So you're going to be constantly trying to gain and lower your Soul Tithe. So you want to gain Soul Tithe so you can start triggering those Threshold effects as well as gain Corruption. And you want to lower your Soul uh, Tithe so that you don't, well, die. So that you don't accidentally kill yourself. Oh, well. We've got the... Yeah, concentrate the Soul Tax. Soul Tax isn't bad. Shadow Dancer, Death Strike 1, Rage 50%, Soul Tithe 2. Maybe we uh, try and make a Shadow Dancer build. I haven't really used that one much yet. Uh, Exploit is inflict 12 damage, Rage 25%, and another 25% if it happens to be your opener as well. And then finally, Maneuver, Block 7, Draw 1. I like a Maneuver. Maneuver's just handy. So, probably Power Draw here, I guess. Inflict 8 damage, Soul Tithe 1, Draw 1 over the Diversion. I don't necessarily have support for block. Wait, okay, there we go. Because I don't necessarily have support for discard in this deck, and upgrading my base cards in the deck doesn't give me discard benefits, whereas the other, the corruption deck for this character does. Let's have energy during the void fight, start each turn, gain overcharge. Oh, sorry, at the start of each turn, gain overcharge one and increase your max energy by one. There's also during the first, uh, during the void fight, your first two cards played will trigger plus one times. So we're probably looking for the possibility of getting, I don't know, a buff, and then a Black Void Stone on the buff, maybe. Worked out pretty well for us last time. During the Void Fight, every time you purge a guard, gain block three. We're probably going to be doing that relatively commonly. Because we should have a reasonable amount of access to draw here. And then finally, Blessing of Weakness. Each time the Void casts Fury, it will suffer. Three weak and three vulnerable. So three weak and three vulnerable because the Void loses two per stack. So that only lasts two turns. But two turns matters. Two turns certainly matters. Ooh, okie dokie. Lose 20% max HP. Gain tea leaves artifact. Tea leaves. Praying for greed at shrines will grant you an upgrade point as well. That actually might be enough to make me like hard path specifically for that. So how would I hard path specifically for that? That would be... I'm just going to propose a possibility. Right? Da, da, da. Go down to here, possibly dupe a card because we just upgraded a card. Probably got a gem in a card by that point as well. We might you know, hop around the top side instead. Um, then we can cut down in this way. Maybe go to that shop. Maybe not. I think I have to lose that death touch because then I go here to the Furious Assault. Sorry, that that uh, elite. I go up, up, across, 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 down. I get to hit both shrines. So I get two upgrades from those as well as a bunch of souls. And a bunch of money, and then I can... Uh, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go to Inconsequential almost certainly afterwards. Sift 1 blocks... Uh, block X, rather. X is equal to the number of cards in your discard. I'm probably not going to want to go heavily into sifting. Maybe conditional sifting. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, tea leaves is really good. And, yeah, we got a Black Void Stone there as well. Okay. Okay. Let's Empowering Darkness drop for a Maneuver. Try and get a little bit of draw there. We'll also drop the Soul Tithe or Grasp, rather, for a par draw. There's something about Death Strike I don't think I understand. When you play an attack card, if your Death Strike 
is equal to or higher than the card's energy cost. So if I have Death Strike 4 and I play a two cost card, or if I have Death Strike 2 and I play a two cost card, then it will trigger plus one times. Then my Death Strike will be reduced by the card's cost, so it will consume all of the two. And then zero costs still reduce Death Strike by one. So it's good for duping the effects of one costs. Hmm. So also concentrate the possibility of Black Void stoning that, but I'm not really into that at all. Honestly, the Black Void Stone in Soul Tax doesn't seem that bad. Soul Tide 2 get two damage against the single targets and such. I actually like that a lot. Oh, and <laughs> you know what? If we're going to do that, let's probably put that card in the deck. Uh, do I also want to exploit... We'll see. We'll see. This character is really, really upgrade heavy, which is why I'm so jazzed to see what we just got there. Uh, okay, actually, I can't go up to the killing blow after this, right? Because dot, dot, dot. And then that'll be already excluded. So I'll have to go, but, but. That's fine. I wanted to go to the dark anyway, though. So build up is Death Strike 1, Soul Type 2, inflict 3 damage. Upgrades will also give you an overcharge and deal a bit more damage. Natural 20 right there, though, as well, for vulnerability to all creatures. I might give up an upgrade literally just to get a natural 20. How often am I going to be able to set up vulnerability outside of that, right? This character doesn't have great access to vulnerability, I don't believe. Yeah, I, I, I want the natural 20 more than I want anything else there. Um, deal 2 damage, apply Vulnerable 2. That's the knife in the dark there. Upgrades to... Apply Vulnerable 2, weak 1, and slow to, uh, 1. Oh, and then, yeah, also it increases its energy cost at that point. Knife in the dark. Um, power draw, that's great. So I definitely want to go to that location. Knife in the dark. This one actually already comes with rage in it also. Hmm. But there's Death's Embrace down here. To draw one, discard one, and lower Soul Tithe by two. Happy to see that. Okay, so... Feels like I do go to the bottom Soul Collector, just so that I can go up in this path. That way. Alright, let's start executing it then. This natural 20 is going to be, hopefully... Hugely powerful for us. Hmm. Is there anything I need to worry about on these turns? Hey, you get a buff that shows you you've taken no damage so far. It will result in a perfect victory. Great. Happy to see it. Get rid of that soul cutter. And then... Close all of those happily. Now no one's attacking this turn. However, I still take two threat because I... Uh, specifically set it up so that I would be taking damage. Let's... Par in darkness, and then just... Yeah, I'm just gonna kill the Throat Cutter again. I do want more Soul Tide, don't I? But I don't want more incoming damage next turn. Yeah, I haven't got much... Oh, I got a decent amount of defense in there. Oh my god, we're getting a Black Void Stone first as well! Yikes! That's uh, pretty good right there. Now this is a thing. I'll uh I'll I'll have a look at this as well. So grasp. Inflict seven damage, soul tithe one. When played, threshold six trigger plus one times. Right? Then we have another card out here. Uh, where are you? I need another threshold card. There we go. Like, opportunity, which doesn't say when played, comma, threshold. So, opportunity, if I play this with four Soul Tithe, it will get two Soul Tithe here, getting to six, and then trigger the threshold. However, this one says when played, so I can't play it with five Soul Tithe and then get it to trigger an extra time. 
Um, that is something that confused me a little bit the first time. And then that's our damage. So, Spirit Shield. I'll happily take that. Hellmongrel, Forsaken Puppy, and the Cinderhound. Nothing I think I need to really concern myself with here. Outside of the Ordinary, at least. There we go. Pop both of those out, and then purge one more card? Sure. Leaving myself with an Empowering Darkness for the start of the next turn, so that I can just remove all the damage. Uh -huh. hmm. No, I still want to kill Hell Mongrel first rather than the Forsaken Poppy. Also going to leave both the Empowering Darknesses in hand here. Feels like it's going to have to be a hard block turn next turn. Incoming is 24. All the enemies just want my blood right now. I mean... We made our way entirely out from under it. I feel great about that. They're all attacking this turn as well. This is perfect. Uh, the reason in particular this is perfect is because now I can use a grasp to get that kill. Everyone else is weakened. I think I do need to set up for kills next turn. Ideally. Okay. Use the power. Kill you. Kill you. Nice. Get another perfect fight. I need to dupe the salt axe, right? That's the one we're duping. I think it makes the most sense for us. Ooh, an upgrade point here as well. There's also Par Draw. Uh, Hinder Shield. Block 13, Death Strike 1, reduce Salt uh, Tithe by 2. That's a way to work some Death Strike into the build. It's also just a large block card. Maybe it's super worth some Soul Tithe removal. The, the draw is the other consideration there, right? The other big consideration. Okay. Shadow Dancer is certainly feeling like a better upgrade now. Natural 20 needs to be upgraded. Natural 20 is always going in this deck somewhere. So let's cut a... Two Empowering Darknesses. One is going to be a Natural 20. The other is going to be a Hindering Shield. I'm not yet going to throw the Black Void Stone on anything. We're not far off. Okay. Dupe the Soul Tax. Can't dupe with Souls. I'm literally just one short of being able to dupe them with Souls. Rough. So I'm going to suffer the Curse. Pay with Voids. Fine. At least let's make sure that I remember to put that in the deck. Lest I be sad about that later. That's Embrace. Void more. Single creature fight where he gets stronger as you purge cards. Honestly, really shouldn't be any problem for us or related really to us at all. Potentially don't purge any cards this turn. Purge two cards and then hinder shields. Not bad. When it reaches three, it resets and gains plus two AP. Do I want it to gain plus two AP this turn? It's a lot of damage left in my deck, sure. And also is not attacking this turn, so I'm not even paying for it yet. 
Let's start out with the Grasp. I could start out with the Soul Tide. Double trigger that. Sure. There is so much damage left in the deck. I truly believe it would be an anomaly if I don't kill next turn. Especially using the, the spell. Yeah, and there's only attacks left in the deck. We're totally fine. Uh, uh, draw. Kill. Now. The Death's Embrace. Draw one, discard one. Upgrades to draw two, discard two. Lower soul type by two. That could be a good thing to put the Black Void Stone in. However, I've got to make sure that I actually can get my soul tithe to the degree that it actually starts making those opportunities useful. Uh, because otherwise, I'm uh, very sad. Just very, very sad. So I don't think I'm going to put the Death's Embrace in the deck yet. I think we'll just keep in mind that we have access to that if we need it. Uh, Jinx Leprechaun, Power Draw. Thank you for the Power Draw, certainly. Opportunity, so that's literally just gain four Soul Tithe in the opening turn if I definitely want it. I probably do want it as well. Hinder Shield, or not? Hinder Shield. I might just want Hinder Shield in hand for the next turn. Yeah, we're up to 12. Pretty happy to have this. Let's hinder shield before a par draw. Yikes. Yeah, I just realized where we are. We're about to take a significant amount of damage. The range, that's not that off. I really should have used the, the sacrifice this turn. All right. Ow. 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 My health. I'm glad we got the spirit shield at least. Double soul tax for the easy kill. Maneuver our way to a... Spirit shields, and then take 23. Oh, that hurts. Thank heck I found a kill at the very end there because, whoops, that was a badly misordered turn and could have, uh, could have been cost me the fight. Spirit shield, purge block. Five. I think I need that upgrade right now. Um... Still going to the Soul Collector. In Emergency Break Glass, the first time you reduce to zero HP, remove this item and go back to 30. So draw one card each time you expel a card. This is hugely, hugely great. Uh, and then second card is played in your turn. Gain 50% rage. That's also really good. I'm going to be taking the in emergency break glass. Deal six damage. Deal an additional six for each attack blade this turn. Not really relevant to us yet. I'm going to look to see if there's anything out here that I care about yet. No. I mean, that's sift a little bit. Right? I could put that on a natural 20. Eh, uh, no, I probably put rigged on the natural 20, actually. No, 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 because natural 20 doesn't need to be rigged, right? We we don't have damage on the first turns because we're still ramping up at that point. Sure. Mm, actually, maybe it's on maneuver, which also draws a card, so it'll draw an extra card and then just discard one of the two. Sure. Sister, they increase their frenzy each turn and are able to heal and remove debuffs. That's fine. We'll go into the fight. Again, don't really think I have a complicating factor here that I have to concern myself with. Or rather, with which I have to concern myself. Um, Holy Fire and Flicks Burning 2. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 
I need to get as much corruption as I can early here because I really need to be able to take one down. Lest I just start bleeding ridiculously. There's the hinder shield, thankfully. Good turn for it. It's probably going to be soul tax, soul tax, hinder shield, grasp. It's pretty good. Actually, with a 50% rage, we could just kill a target here. Or not. It's fine too. <laughs> Should have just done it at the start of the turn. Yeah, I'm having difficulty using the spells of this character, certainly. That's um, uh, a problem I've noted before in my own play here. That's... Yeah. Natural 20 is a great pull. Flicks burning to prefer to kill you with an opportunity. I think so. Just need to get one off the field so I don't have to dedicate an attack to it on a future turn. Okay. Let's certainly start with the Empowering Darkness. Go for the one that's attacking next turn just in case I do have the ability to take them down. we do, but we take seven on the back end. Although, thankfully, yeah, our way out of the fight is pretty clear afterwards. I want all of these to have a lower threshold so that I can afford to keep my threshold significantly. Actually, that is it, isn't it? It's just, it's literally just that because I have so many things that give me Soul Tithe and remove the Soul Tithe in this deck, I just need to make sure the threshold is lower so that I have the ability to, to actually play, you know? Fine. Definitely opportunity. All right, treasure, come on. No upgrades here, unfortunately, but there's another opportunity. Also up against the Spirit Shield, but Spirit Shield is bad block it, uh, initially, which is the problem I don't want to have to fi uh, face. I need things that even out the fact that I am initially quite weak. I also do really want to upgrade some of these blocks. Make myself more comfortable in those fights, especially considering the uh, lagging health that we have and the fact that I'm going to be using these shrines always for uh, upgrades rather than resting. Yeah, both opportunities upgrade to start out with here, though. Sidestep. Block X equal to your current energy times two. Always happy to have a sidestep. Upgrades to also give us an energy. I wouldn't be surprised to honestly put a gem in this. We've still got the, the Black Void Stone. I'd be more than happy to put it in something like the sidestep here. Extremely happy, in fact, to do that. Hold on to the Hinder Shield for next turn. This might be dumb. I'm doing it, though. Okay. And we get all the Soul Tithe we could need. At least for that turn. 26 incoming damage next turn. Yikes. Hopefully we get Spirit Shield. Spirit shield, please. Spirit shield. No, that's not spirit shield. Uh, we have to start with the empowering darkness then. Okay, we go. Soul tax one against this target. That's already dead then. Soul tax against you as well. And then I can confirm one of the kills. And that's probably all I should do here. Another six as well. Then ideally, we just look for an aggressive turn here. Yeah, if we get a defensive turn, that's fine. We can just wait until the next aggressive turn. And that'll be the easy kill next turn. Just soul tax, soul tax, kill.
Perfect. Yeah, sidestep is definitely going to be the upgrade exactly in the way that I said previously. In fact, I think I need to put it in the deck right now. Sidestep. Sidestep gets the sockets. Rage definitely is useful here. So what's Rage in? Rage, natural 20. Yeah, I guess. Seems fine. Drop a grass for another power draw. Should have done that earlier. That's entirely my bad. But then, uh, then we're out of there. Yeah, spirit shields here very early. So sidestep. I'm probably going to try and use sidestep next turn. So I'm going to hinder shield, purge the spirit shield. So now I can get a bunch of draw. Touch another two cards to get an attack out there. I really want to kill this turn. So this would be 12 block by itself. I had to play it in that order, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, I did have to play it in that order so that I would have the ability to uh, actually get the opener impact. Okay, we'll start out with Empowering Darkness here as well. Soul tax our way happily into that kill. One more rage means, yeah. Wow. I was certain we were going to have the kill on the other hand side just after the rage. Gosh, my health value is really, really struggling here. There's, we got a health potion. It's fine. It's fine. Manage my deck with this infecty fight. Get that health potion. We've got the ability to come back to life as well. It's okay. We can play risky. To start with a little here, at least. My deck still just light on defense. There's a 16. Opportunity. We have no defense in this hand either. Rough. Um, soul tax you two times, then par draw. And we're dead. I just did not leave myself with the ability to defend myself much at all. So we'll lose that relic. Moving on. Sidestep's totally fine here. We can natural 20 and then just go for him. Again. Two, three. Yeah, most of the damage is me dealing it to myself right now. Thankfully, Spirit Shield is right on time. Oh, and we have most... Yeah, most draws in the deck were going to have some sort of lethal in them. I want my upgrades. What am I telling you? Sidestep really needs the upgrade as well. It's the extra defense we kind of still need in the deck. I'm going to put an Empowering Darkness in there and cut a Grasp. In fact, I might cut a second Grasp. Uh, yeah, for the other Empowering Darkness. Corpse Beast. Unholy Beast gets stronger every turn. So do we. Hmm, 
Flame Shield. At the start of your turn, tick this value up by one and block X, where X is equal to the count of this item. Resets after each fight. I think that we have to take that. Every eighth ability card costs zero would also be pretty good, but couldn't use it there. Uh, that's a garbage jump for the head right there, if I've ever seen one. Well, we got four corruption at least. Definitely discard the void. But the Hinder Shield there easily as well. Do we want to go Soul Taxes for this? Or dupe the uh, opportunity? Let's dupe the opportunity. Just start trying to scale a little better. I'm going to keep the sidestep in hand until it's used. It's too important. I'll happily take three damage this turn so that I can hold the sideburn. Sidestep, rather. There we go, the incoming 24. And I have to play it as the opener, right? Should have done the sacrifice earlier. That's my bad. 30 incoming damage this turn as well. Oof. Thank you, Spirit Shield, for being here. It's 18 of it. Soul tax, interesting. I, mean, I guess I used them. Hmm. We've got two soul taxes and two opportunities left in the deck, or one soul tax and two opportunities with the two soul, uh, soul taxes uh, stapled together. We've also got an incoming of 30 something this turn, so I really hope that I manage to draw lethal here. There we go. Yeah, this should be it. One, two, three. All's well that ends well there. We do really want some extra, some extra overcharge here. Opportunity, uh, I mean, I kind of just want to put block on the opportunities, but I might not necessarily get that either. Pretty much any of these empowering darknesses can just use the void stone though. Okay, we're also flush with money, so maybe I want to buy some potions before we go into the next floor. Just a couple potions, you know. The Priest and the Congregation. They inflict Banes and deals damage uh, based on the cards drawn. Uh, when its minions spawn, their AP is based off the current battle round. What is the chance that I just go in and really hard embarrass myself? Pretty high. I'm gonna cut one Empowering Darkness for a Death's Embrace, so I have the ability to get past voids the enemy might be putting in my deck, as well as have the ability to remove more Soul Tithe. And then I'm gonna go in. I really hope that not taking a potion in here didn't just kill me. Uh, rude. Peck. Uh, additionally, force you draw one, gains AP equal to the drawn card's cost. I like drawing, so thank you for that. Each time you draw a card that isn't a void, you'll suffer two damage. If you draw a bane, you'll suffer two additional damage. Rude. I guess I just... Hinder shields and purge so I can play the corruption. Keep the sidestep in hand. Oh, they make me draw a card before my turn, so I actually still only draw up to the same hand. Rough. Hmm. Probably gonna leave that spirit shield in hand turn. Uh, in turn, in hand this turn, rather. Whoops. 
play out that void as well. So I don't have to draw it ever again. Hmm. Definitely throw out the Empowering Darkness. Shield's 10 by itself right now. What? Oh, right, I drew a card. Oh, I can't believe I did that. There we go. I'll cut one damage this turn. Oh, God. Wow, they're really going for it, eh? Uh, I mean... Yes, I play the Empowering Darkness and then Power Draw. Okay, it's fine. Draw one, discard one. Did we just draw nothing there? No, 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 okay, we got it. Yeah, we're just hard dead. Yeah, we were hard dead for a while there. Oh, rude. <laughs> oh, it's taken 36 minutes as well to get to hard dead, which means that if I tried to go for another run and it turned out to be successful, this could end up being a four hour episode, which, uh, sorry, but that's actually just way too long for me. Uh, I was trying to manage my soul tithe, but unfortunately the, the ways that I included to actually block it were were just inadequate and i was i was trying heavily to capitalize upon adding extra soul tithe with the the soul taxes that we were able to get so many of out of uh if if honestly at this point i just pivoted defensive and just used the soul tides maybe even cut the grasps from the deck i wonder if we would have had a completely different time also if i had have just used some potions in the final fight it's possible we would have managed to get through that but i kind of want to save them for opportunities in the future that i thought were going to be riskier because obviously like this desk uh, this deck was facing trouble pretty much the entire time so it was always going to have some sort of a, a risky play that it gets to make i think uh hard focusing on the upgrades was nice but we died, so didn't, not exactly what I should do. I, I do tend to kind of just like see a ball and then run with it as far as I possibly can, right? In games like this. And I tried to get as many upgrades as possible this floor to see if like heavy upgrade version of this deck then runs super smooth. Not really, because the defense in this deck doesn't increase as you increase your upgrades. In fact, you increase your offense pretty ridiculously, but your, uh, your defensive toolkit is really, really lacking. So I think I need to look for the defensive toolkit for this character first in the future. But for the moment, I want to say that my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Vault of the Void. Sub one hour episode. First time in a long time. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content of this game past, present and future. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.